The five stages of grieving are absolute nonsense. There's no scientific proof for it. So if you're a well-meaning friend or neighbor or a coach or a helper, and I even hear therapists getting it wrong. So it's interesting, right? For the past decades, all oh, the five stages of grief, and there's some truth in it, but we all grief differently. We have our unique fingerprint where it comes to grieving. And so what does science actually say? And what does the study of the successful show, NLP? Okay, so I'm going to give you three things that work really well for grief and loss. Okay, so one, science has shown that talking about it is a very good thing. So talking about it when you're ready, not because you're forced. Talking about it with, uh, with a good listener, someone who, who listens with their ears rather than their mouth, someone who cares, not about advising here. If you've never lived that, then shut your mouth. If it's not your loss, then shut your mouth. It's well-meaning as a coach that you want to fix things or as a helper that you want to fix things, but just listen, let someone talk. There is healing in that. It's what the brain needs, that sense of connection in positive emotions like care and understanding and things like that, compassion. Yeah, so when two people are in that space, then it augments on its own. That's all you need to do to give compassion and care. Second thing that science has shown is a very good thing. Those are rituals. Now, rituals, of course, immediately after someone is lost or has passed away, like the funeral, but also other rituals, not rituals that bring you down and are like, let's say five years later, a little bit much, but lighting a candle or celebrating the birthday. So in healthy ways, having a ritual, not, not a shrine where you cry every day, but what is something that you could do to honor that person? And the third thing that you can do to help someone with loss or grief, or if that's yourself, that is something that both science came up as well as the study of the successful NLP. And if you're actually interested in learning NLP and actually seeing me do the, the grief pattern inside a training, then you can study NLP with me online. You can study it in Bali, Amsterdam, Los Angeles, Miami, and Mexico. So do contact us. Just visit our website at www.globalnlptraining.com or just DM me. So the third thing. So the third thing is about allowing the other person to have a legacy. What's the legacy of that person? The way that I like to put it is I'd like to lead a life that matters beyond my own lifetime. And with that, I mean positively. <laughs> so it is about letting someone lead a life that matters beyond their own lifetime from a positive point of view. So questions that you should ask yourself, what did this person teach me? What did this person give me? What does this person want to teach and bring into my life? What does this person stand on? What are the values? You get the idea. And how am I going to let that live on inside of me rather than have their death lead on inside of me, uh, 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 control my life? Or the way that they died control my life, control my grieving. But to actually go, well, who was this person? And how am I carry that further, forward? Because whatever you do, Whatever you do in your grief is somebody else's legacy. It's the legacy of the person who you lost and are mourning. You're not doing them any favors. And it's okay to cry and it's okay to need to heal. But at some point, you got to ask yourself the question, how can I turn my raw emotions that I'm experiencing right now and to turn it into something good, to turn it into a legacy of the other person? And that means that rather than looking back and being sad, you need to look forward and into the present to see, well, what can I do? What can I do to make that amazing?